guys, it's Dara Fair and Maria behind the camera. Exciting news. Um, today we're here to show you the new concrete effect paint from Vintro. So this is it here. It comes in a 2.5 litre tin. Um, really nice tin. Um, and it's available through all your Vintro retailers effective immediately. So that's exciting news. We've been waiting a long time for it and I know you've seen glimpses of the concrete effect paint um, through posts and social media. It's available in three colours. So you've got flint, slate and travertine. And New Zealand being quite special, we've got an extra colour. We've got a colour called pumice as well. Um, and at the end of this video, we'll show you um, an example of all of those colours so you can kind of see it, um, see the difference between all four colours. Today we're going to be using slate. Um, so slate is like a blue-grey. Uh, and if I open this up so you can see what it looks like. There we go, so beautiful slate. I'm gonna give this a really good stir. It's really creamy consistency, um, really beautiful to work with. You can kind of see there. It's quite a dark color at the moment, so when you open up the tin, it's always going to be a lot darker than what you're expecting when you brush it out on the walls. Um, so when you open up your tin and you're seeing a different colour or a colour you're not expecting, don't freak out. This paint does lift and shift quite a lot as it dries and you'll see that in the video today. Um, so the Concrete Effect paint is a beautiful water-based paint. Um, the best way to describe it is it's a real easy paint to create a beautiful effect on your walls. Um, you basically have one tin, you brush it out and it does its thing, makes your walls look like concrete. There's no real special tools required to apply it on your walls. We're going to be doing it with a four inch style mister wall brush. Um, you can also trial it on as well, that's another way to put it on. But I quite like brushing it on because it's really effortless um, and easy to do. And I think anyone can, um, can achieve a, a brush out of the concrete effect paint. So <clears throat> this is the brush here that we'll be using today. It's a, a nice style mister four inch wall brush and your retailers will have these in stock as well, um, but we find it works really well with the Concrete Effect paint. So we're gonna be painting the wall behind me today. Um, and you can see we had some big screw holes in here, so we've puttied that up and sanded that back. However, the Concrete Effect paint does cover a multitude of sins, so it's actually really great if you've got a wall with you know, little pin holes where the kids have been putting their posters up on, um, it will cover that. If you're halfway through ripping wallpaper and you've given up on it, great product to turn to um, if you've got imperfect or irregular walls really really great and like I said it does cover a lot there's no sanding or priming it's a low VOC product there's no smell um, so just it ticks all the boxes really so there's lots of ways to use it to create different effects and you can create whatever it is that you like or whatever is going to suit your home and your style um, so you can create a really pitted look, you can create something a little bit more subtle and shaded. So for this video, we're going to show you three ways or, to brush it on. Um, so we're going to do on this side, um, we're going to do a really heavy kind of pitted kind of look. And then we're going to go for a medium texture and then we're going to go for subtle shading. Um, and there's only minor things that you do differently for the three looks. So it'll be a good chance for you to see how it all works. Um, and I'll get started. So for the texture look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the paint. I'm going to pick up a fairly good amount of paint um, and brush it out. And really there's no, not too much you need to think about. So there's my paint, kind of loaded it up that much. And I'm just going to brush it out. And I'm going to go in like a crisscrossy type motion. So loading up quite a bit of paint, brushing it out in all directions. Now Ventro created this product for the Scandinavian market where they had a product up there that um, was a concrete effect paint but had a lot of chemicals you had to put gloves and masks on while you were using it. So it's really great that they've come up with a product that is you know, low in VOCs, 
and it's easy to apply. You don't need a lot of tools to do it with. It's pretty amazing when you think about it, what this paint does um, and is capable of. Oh, you see I'm just brushing it just in all directions. It's important to brush it in all directions to kind of create some shading. And I'm loading it up a little bit. And you can see my brush stroke, so if Maria you go closer to that area, you can see the brush strokes there. Really great coverage. No sanding or priming, it's what we like. Obviously, you'll kind of mask where you're skidding borders, but because we're painting in the studio, we have the luxury of painting straight down onto the ground. <laughs> going and where we're going to treat it differently is kind of halfway through so again this for the, excuse me, for the medium texture I'm going to apply the paint the same amount so picking up loading up and just brushing it out in all directions And the second section, which is going to be our medium textured area. Now I'm going to move on to here and I'm going to show you how to do a subtle texture. So all you're going to do at this point for the first coat is just pick up a, small, a thinner amount of paint and you're going to spread it out a lot thinner. Again, still in all directions. But if Maria comes up really closely, she'll be able to show you the texture there versus that te uh, the amount of paint there or how thick and thin the difference between um, the amount of paint. And it's all just in the amount of paint that you pick up and how you spread it. So I'm going to spread it out more thinly um, on this section for subtle shading. see as I'm working over it again and again I'm getting my subtle texture come through and my shading so um, and I'm just spreading it out nice and thin and I'm angling my brush out like that kind of like that cool now if we go it's drying really really fast because it's you know I've put a reasonably it's not too thick there's some thicker areas here which is taking which will take a little bit longer to dry but as soon as you get these drying marks. So you can see that as that paint dries, that colour is lifting a lot. So that's the actual colour, that's the dry paint there, that's wet paint. So you can see the colour shifting quite a bit. But a really good tip is if you're wanting to create texture, is put your paint on, brush it out in every which way, keep going, and when you look back and you start seeing these dry marks, little spots of the paler colours coming through, come back over, 
and pull your paint around for texture. So how do you pull your paint around for texture? Brush that way, kind of at that angle, and you start going like, just pulling it around. So can you see there, Maria, on camera? Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks great. Yeah. So you can see all that pitted texture. And this part of it, just quite organic. You know, it's just what you like um, with your brushwork. And you can see the texture kind of before your eyes. So you can see how it is. So you can kind of control, um, you know, how much texture you actually want. The more you pull it around, the more texture you're going to create. So it's up to you how you want that texture to look. And you kind of have that freedom. And we will do a second coat on this, but we're going to leave that to dry. But you can see all of that gorgeous texture is just created by just leaving the paint to kind of dry a little bit. Once you get your light spots coming along with your brush at that angle and just pulling around. This part of it is actually quite fun because you get to see it kind of come to life. This is my medium texture area. So you can see I'm getting my dry spots on here as well. So I want texture but I don't want too much so I'm just going to pull it around a little bit here and there and that's it that's all I'm going to do so and over here is my subtle texture and I'm not actually going to pull that around I'm just going to leave it to dry so you've got your subtle texture there and then you've got your medium texture section and then you've got your heavy textured section and that paint is going to lift and dry um, and we might put you on time lapse now um, just put the phone on a stand, put you on time lapse just so you can see the walls drying. Hi guys, we're back. So you would have seen the time lapse of the wall drying just before and seeing that colour shift from that dark colour, well basically to this colour. So it's a, a beautiful blue grey. Um, and now we're going to get ready to do the second coat. So you can see after the first coat, if you come up close, Maria, we can, you can see all the beautiful kind of texture that's been created through the first coat. So this is our um, textured area. And then we move across to our kind of medium texture through here. And then even further to our subtle texture. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to create some shading through our second coat. So the first coat really is all about creating the right texture. And then the second coat you're going to um, apply over the areas maybe that you've missed. So you can see I've missed a couple of areas here. You can see after the first coat the coverage is amazing. So it's got really, really, really great coverage. But you do need a second coat to create that shading um, and creating depth, light and dark. So, um, I mean, we're really happy with the texture here. It's got that beautiful kind of concrete texture underlying and all the different um, areas from the subtle right through to the medium and the textured area. So you can adjust depending on what you want or how you want your walls to look, um, you know, your application method. So now we're going to get ready and do the second coat. Give my paint just a quick stir. And now I'm going to pick up my paint and I'm going to go over. Let's do the textured area first. So 
again in the same motion and this is really to create shading in the colour and it's not like a full full coat I call it skimming you kind of you kind of you know just very quickly you don't need to cover everything um, but more of a skim coat and that's to create what that will do is it will create light and dark and what's really cool is if you put it on quite thick at this point you can see here there's some little holes um, and pockets and stuff that are coming through um, which looks really neat at the end as a concrete effect so I'm picking up a reasonable amount of paint and really the second the second coat is a real quick um, job so that's about as much as I'm going to do for my second coat on my textured area so you can see it's not like a full full coat and while I'm here while the paint's wet I might just angle my brush and on the thicker areas kind of pull it around a little bit Like I said at the, as I was applying at the start, the more you pull it around, the more texture you're going to create. So that's about the extent of my second coat um, for that textured area. And we'll leave that to dry and that will start lifting. And then I'm going to move along to my medium texture area. Pick up a little bit of paint. And again, Spread it around. Now I'm going to go over to my subtle shading and I'm going to keep up a thin amount of paint and I'm just going to Spread that out, kind of like that, to create some shading. It does look, it's very contrasting when you put the second coat on because the paint is so dark. But remember, it does lift back to that kind of lighter grey colour when you're done. Slate is a lovely. So that's the extent there of my um, my subtle sm smoother um, and that's going to create really lovely shading for me when that dries. I'm just going to go over and have a quick look at my medium texture um, and it's drying really lovely so I might just pull that around just a little bit just now that it's had a little bit of time. Not too much. And then now we're just going to leave that all to dry and we'll see what the end effect is like. Easy. Hi guys, we're back. Um, the walls are nice and dry um, and we've created a beautiful concrete effect um, on these walls. We've got over here, we've got all the texture. So that's the more textured area that we did in the video. See, there's some beautiful um, con a concrete effect texture. The second coat has provided us some beautiful subtle shading of light and dark. It's very authentic looking. It feels very kind of velvety. Um, it's got a beautiful kind of feel to it. Um, and then you've got the areas where we've pulled around with a paintbrush and it's created that pitted concrete effect. Um, you can see there that's where the brush is kind of sweeped up. A really stunning finish um, and really easy to do. This is an amazing um, product that Vintro have created and it really just blows our mind that this is all created with basically a can of paint and a brush. Um, so you don't need, you know, specialised kind of plasters, you, it's non-toxic, it's all water-based, it's an easy DIY product and creates a beautiful designer effect. Um, a great effect for um, I think bedrooms, um, feature walls, dining, um, and I'm actually pretty keen to use this in my bathroom. Um, but a really, really lovely kind of pitted 
textured concrete effect there. And then we move along here to this. This is a little bit more subtle. So it's still got that texture. It's still got a little bit of pitting. Um, and it's still got that beautiful variation of light and dark in the concrete effect. But it's not as textured as um, our first section there. So you can adjust the texture to suit your home, depending on what you're looking to create, what space it's going into, and that's really all in the brushwork. So all we did here was when the little um, dry spots came up, we just pulled it around less. Um, so it's still got beautiful shading to it, it's lovely, it's just a little bit more subtle. And then down here, we've gone even more subtle. So less pitting, just more shading and texture. So we didn't pull this around at all. We just kind of painted like that and you can see it's got that beautiful, subtle um, light and dark all the way through. Um, and a really, really beautiful kind of concrete effect there. So whichever kind of style you want, um, it's completely up to you and it's all in your brushwork. Um, here's a little tip if you find that you've created too much texture, you can actually sand this down a little bit as well, sand the texture down with some 180 grit. Um, and I might just grab some 180 and show you how that's done. So, do it with a sanding block, wrap it around a sanding block. Uh, but say you were going for medium texture and you didn't want as much, you didn't want that there. So you grab your 180 grit, comes off quite powdery, and you can flatten off that texture. And let's flatten off some more. And if I wanted to flatten off even more, I can. So, it is sandable. So you can adjust it to suit. Some people might want to do a subtle and then have some areas where it's smoother. Or maybe you want it more, you know, industrial and more pitted looking. So that's pretty much it really. I mean, it's a really incredible product. We've used it a lot um, and we've done lots of walls in it before the launch. So I will, um, we will make sure to put those photos up. We've applied it over um, planger board. Um, really imperfect walls with three colors on it. We've painted over that in one coat. Um, so there's lots of different applications. So this is the slate um, concrete effect paint done on this wall. And if we zoom back over here, Maria, you can remember what the wall used to look like. So that was the original there. So if you wanted it even more textured, all you do is you use more paint and you brush, when it's drying, you brush over it more to get even more texture. And we've actually got an example here of a heavily textured piece. This is done in the colour called pumice. And this is heavily textured. So we've loaded up thick paint and pulled it around loads and loads and loads, like you know, two or three times to get that beautiful kind of heavily textured look and you can create that with any of the con concrete effect paints. I think this is a really exciting product for our customers because it's a look that's um, really beautiful um, and normally very hard to achieve. Um, and it's not something that most people would tackle as a DIY project. Um, you normally get some you know, special painters or plasterers in to create this effect. But now with Ventro's concrete effect paint, I think it's easy, it's Basically, you brush it on, you don't need a lot of tools, anyone can really do it, and the effect is incredible. Um, so, there you go, Vintro Concrete Effect Paint, now in New Zealand. Inquire with your retailers, they have access to all the colours, um, or you can buy it online as well at vintropaint.co.nz. And take a look at the photos um, now of all those colours. Really lovely effects. So whether you want to go light with pumice, um, pumice is a really lovely light pale grey colour. It's got beautiful shading to it. Then flint is a little bit more industrial. Um, it's a darker grey. The slate is kind of like a mid grey with a you know blue grey. Um, really lovely and soft. 
and travertine is ideal for the Tuscan style homes. It's very earthy and warm and cosy. All right guys, that's it. It's a concrete effect paint. It's as easy as that. So brush, paint, and you're away. Um, we look forward to seeing all your projects. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, on Instagram. Lots of information for you on the website as well at ventropaint.co.nz. We look forward to seeing what you create in your homes with the Ventro Concrete Effect Paint.